Here I will give you a quick review of exponents and radicals. And so in order to do this, let's review a couple of rules and then we'll see a couple of examples using those rules. The first rule that I need to review with you guys is when you have two bases that are the same, what do you do with these exponents? When you have two bases that are the same, you add the exponents. Actually, let's show it. 3 plus 4 and then that equals x to the 7th. If you are dividing then you would have to, instead of add the exponents, you would subtract the exponents. And so you get x to the 4 minus 3. So in this case, we get x to the positive 1. And we don't need to write a positive 1. We can just leave the, the x alone without the exponent. Because we just assume that there's a positive 1 right there. If you end up getting a negative exponent, like in this case... In this case, you would go x to the 3 minus 4, then you subtract, you get x to the negative 1. This leads us to another rule that we need to know when working with exponents, and that is when you have a negative exponent, you can uh, change the location of that, that uh, base. Right now, the base is in the numerator. You can change the location and put them down on, at the other side of the fraction, so now his exponent is positive. And again, we don't need to write the 1, but I'm going to anyways. <clears throat> and that works both ways. If you had, let's say you had 1 over x to the negative 5, the exponent is negative. If you change its location, you put him on top, then now you have just x to the 5th. So this is ultimately the same as that. Okay, so we have multiplying, uh, the multiplying law, the dividing law, the negative exponent law, and finally, not but not least, uh, we have the the what should we call it the the parenthesis exponent law. Now I just made that up, but whenever you have a parenthesis exponent, that three is on the outside of the parenthesis, you are going to do something special with the four and the three. Instead of adding them, you will multiply. Let me show you. That three means that you're multiplying x to the fourth to itself three times. And if you're doing that three times, then you would have to add the 4 to itself three times. 4 plus 4 is 8, plus 4 is 12. And you can see from here, we could have just went 4 times 3 to get straight to our answer instead of having to write all this stuff. All right, so that's the parenthesis exponent rule. Now let's look at rational rules. There's only a few rational rules that are uh, important to mention here. And I'm not going to use, ah, i use x again. Okay, so let's say we have an x inside of a square root sign, and that's multiplying to uh, an x inside of another square root sign. Let's say that one has the power of 3. If you do that, then you just put them both under the same radical, and then you multiply the two together. And in this case, we would use the, the rules, the laws that we were just reviewing right there, and you would get um, the square root of x to the fourth. That can be simplified, but we'll get there later. Uh, right now, this square root sign has an index number, or you can call that a root of 2. Whenever the, there is no number there, you're assuming that there's a 2. If there was a 3, the law would still remain the same. You would still just multiply what's inside of the radical, and that, that would be a result. You could also go the opposite way. You can split things apart. So let's say you have the square root of AB. You can write this as the square root of A times the square root of B. I just realized I'm a dork. It's not rationals. It's radicals. Rationals are the polynomial func fractions. We're looking at radicals right now. All right, the other really important rash radical rule is... Uh, I call it flower power. I heard it from another teacher one day. I said, what the heck is that? And it made a lot of sense to me. It helps you remember it. I mean, I don't know. So anyways, here we go. Let's say we have x to the, we'll say 2 over 3. We'll keep some numbers here because that, you know, you like that better. All right, so the 2 is the power. Now, you can call the 2 a power or you can call it to an exponent. I like the power most. And so x can have a power of 2 on it. The 3 is um, what we call uh, the index number, or you could call it the root number. That goes with the radical like so. Another way we can write this is we could 
do the root number first and then do the power. It doesn't matter which one you choose to do first. It is helpful, however, to choose um, which one to do first when you're simplifying these radical uh, these radicals that uh, have that, that give you rational expressions. So, what the heck is flower power? So, if you're trying to remember this, the two is your flower, and the three, the three is in the pot where the roots grow. So that helps you remember that the three is the root. Now let's look at a couple of practical examples for these rules. When you're multiplying two uh, monomials that look like this, you just think about it as multiplying each of them one at a time. So we're going to do the 3 and the 4 first. That's negative 12. And then you would multiply the a's together. Both of those a's have a 1 for the exponent, so you get a squared. Then you multiply the b's together. 4 plus negative 3 is just a b. There's your answer for that one. That one's done. Okay, using our law for this one, you would get 2 to the third power, x to the third power, then y to the sixth power. Why are those threes there? Because the 2 has an exponent of 1, and so does the x. So you multiply the 1, the 1, and the 2 by the 3, and that's what you get. Now, because we can simplify 2 to the third power, we're going to do so. 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, so we have 8x to the third, y to the sixth. That one's finished. The next one, ooh, we have a zero exponent. Whenever you have a zero exponent, whatever is being raised to the zero power simply equals one. So this whole thing just equals one. One times three a is just three a. And then finally we have a parenthesis exponent with a fraction. The same thing as this one. You multiply the parenthesis exponent to all the inside exponents. So there's a one on there, one on there. So we get five to the second power, x to the sixth power, and then you have y to the second power. 5 squared can be simplified, so we write 25x to the sixth power over y squared. Those are the basic um, exponential, exponential laws in action. And here we got a bunch of negative exponents. The first one is kind of obvious. We kind of already went over that one. It's 1 over x to the 1 power. You don't have to write the 1 power, though. The next one... This one might be a little tricky. The x goes on top with the 2, but the 3 stays on the bottom because the 3 is not being affected by the negative exponent. The 3's exponent is a 1, so we leave it just as this. Now we could write this as x to the second power over 3, or we could write this as 1 third, and then we put the x squared out in front. It's kind of like this guy comes out and floats down and stands out in front of him. Okay, this is really useful for upper level mathematics. Both of these answers are correct. This next one, we first look at the 12 and the 4, and we simplify the 12 over 4. When we simplify the 12 over 4, we get 3. Next, let's just do the subtraction rule. So we have a to the 3 minus negative 2, and then we have b to the negative 4 minus 1. Let's simplify. We get 3a to the 5th, and for the b, we get negative 5. Because b has a negative, we're going to drop him like he's hot and put him on the bottom of the denominator. So we get 3a to the 5th, b to the 5th. They both have a 5? Yeah, they both have a 5. Boom, that's your answer. The last one, even though he's a negative exponent, he still behaves like a parenthesis exponent. He's going to go in there and multiply to all the other exponents like, you know, they want him to, I guess negative 4, y to negative 2. Now we have negative exponents everywhere. What do we do? Oh, let's just flip everything. Everybody has negative exponents, so let's just flip spots. We have y to the second power on the top now. 3 to the second power goes on the bottom, but that's a 9, so let's just write 9. And then we have x to the fourth power. Can't simplify anything there.